Hello my friends, my name is Jason and welcome back to another episode of Engineering Science Recap. Today I'll be talking about the course EC286 Probability and Statistics. Today is September 9th, 2022, the second day of the 2022 fall term. Hope everybody is uh, enjoying uh, being back in person at school. So what is EC286? Well, it's a second year winter course that's uh, part of the engineering science program at U of T. Uh, when I took this course in winter of 2022, uh, the professor was uh, Professor Josh Taylor. And some of the main course topics we covered include counting, conditional probability, Bayes' theorem, random variables and probability distributions, expectation and variance, discrete probability distributions. So this is a list of some of the probability distributions we covered as well as continuous probability distributions. Uh, we also went over functions of random variables, moment generating functions. Uh, we also cover sampling, so this is getting into more of the statistics side of things, central limit theorem, t distributions, quantile plots, confidence intervals, prediction intervals, tolerance limits, maximum likelihood estimation, hypothesis testing, uh, p-values, and goodness of fit and linear regression. And at the end, we had a little bit of fun uh, introducing ourselves to support vector machines and Markov chains. So as you can see, a lot was covered in this course. It's really um, the first introduction into um, the mathematics of probability and uh, statistics, as you might guess from the name of the course. So today I'll be going over uh, a quick question from uh, our second midterm. Uh, it was question one and we t wrote this on April 5th, 2022. Uh, so quite late into the term. Uh, some of the topics that this question covers uh, include Poisson random variables, uh, the exponential distribution, confidence intervals, prediction intervals, as well as the central limit theorem. Uh, so this is essentially all the context we're given. So the number of buses that arrive each hour is described by a Poisson process with parameter lambda equals 2. Answer the following parts below with justification. So A. How many buses arrive on average between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m.? What is the variance of the number of buses that arrive between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m.? Three buses came in the last 10 minutes. What is the expected time until the next bus arrives? And then each day for 30 days, you go to another bus stop. On average, over the 30 days, you waited 10 minutes. So part I estimate, uh, or part one, I should say, estimate 95% confidence intervals for the true mean wait time. And two, estimate a 95% prediction interval uh, for how long you will wait for the next bus you take. If the lower limit is negative, discuss how you might modify your answer to make it more useful. So a lot to cover here, uh, but fear not because uh, these questions aren't super complicated. It's just sort of being able to understand uh, uh, these different uh, probability distributions. So for example, with the mean bus arrival time uh, from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m., we know that the mean of a Poisson random variable is simply lambda. And in this case, we're given lambda equals 2, which means that on average, two buses will arrive every hour. And we know that the mean is linear. So if we consider the interval between 8 and 9 a.m., and then 9 and 10 a.m., we can essentially just um, add up uh, the means. And so therefore, the mean number of bus arrivals from 8 to 10 a.m. will be 2 lambda, which would be 4 buses. So that's quite simple. Part B, now we need to know the variance. And the cool thing about a Poisson random variable is that the variance is, also happens to be equal to lambda. So in this case, it would be 2 buses. And because Again, we can treat um, 8 to 10 a.m. as two intervals eight of one hour length each. Uh, we can essentially just add the variances for these two independent uh, Poisson random variables. So again, we would have the variance being 2 lambda, which would be 4 buses. So now we want to know the expected time of the next bus, uh, given a certain number of buses arriving in the past however many minutes. But um, another interesting property that we should know about Poisson random variables is that the time between arrivals 
uh, can be described by another random variable that has an exponential distribution with parameter beta equals one over r and r is equal to lambda over t. And the exponential distribution is really useful to us because we know it has uh, this property called the memory list property. What this means is that the expected time until the next event or the next arrival does not depend on any past events. So in the context of the question, even though we're given information about how many buses may have arrived in the past however long time, what's interesting is that this, pro this number is arbitrary. Like It doesn't affect future events. It doesn't affect the likelihood that a bus will arrive any earlier or any, any sooner. And so what we can do is we can just take the expected value of the exponential distribution uh, and the expected value is simply, uh, is simply uh, equal to uh, beta, which would be equal to uh, half an hour. And this makes sense uh, because um, we're given lambda is equal to two buses per hour, uh, which would average out to one bus every half hour. Again, r is equal to 2 because lambda is equal to 2, and t would be given as an interval of 1 hour, and so we would get beta is equal to 1 half, uh, half an hour. So now for part 1 of part d, uh, we want a 95% confidence interval for the true mean wait time. So uh, remember that this is for a new bus stop, so it's no longer for, um, we're no longer given um, the lambda equals 2 scenario. So here we're given that uh, we have waited 30 days at a new bus stop. So our sample size is n equals 30 days. And this uh, is a large enough number where we can use the central limit theorem. So we can define a standard normal statistic z um, is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over square root n. And so as n approaches infinity, this statistic should uh, go to a standard normal distribution. And so we want to find the variance uh, of uh, our distribution. And recall that the mean wait time is described by uh, the exponential distribution with parameter beta. And so in this case, we're, uh, we're given that the mean wait time is 10. So beta would be 10 minutes. Uh, and then the variance would simply be beta squared, which is 100. We know alpha is equal to 0 0.05 because we want a 95% confidence interval. And z alpha over 2 would be 1.96. Uh, this is just using our standard z tables. And so we know that the probability of our standard normal statistic z being between negative 1.96 and 1.96 should be equal to 0.95. So now we can set up our confidence interval uh, using uh, this uh, essentially is somewhat of, of a formula. And we would just plug in our values. We know that x bar is equal to 10. This is just what we've observed from the 30 days we've waited for the bus. And again, sigma would be equal uh, to 10 because sigma would be the standard deviation of the exponential distribution, which is beta. So now the confidence interval for mu, uh, once we plug in all our values, we would find it's uh, 8.92 uh, to 11.07 minutes. So this means there's a 95% chance, approximately, uh, that the true mean wait time is within this range. Now for part two, we want to, uh, to do the same thing, but instead use a prediction interval. So we can do all the same stuff, but in our definition of our uh, norm, standard normal statistic, notice how instead of um, a square root n in the denominator, we have a square root 1 plus 1 over n. Now, this is because um, when we define a prediction interval, our variance is going to be a lot higher because we also need to care about the variance of the singular data point, which is the next, um, the next wait time. Uh, so if we were to collect uh, an extra data point, what would that uh, val what could that value be? And that value is uh, has a much higher variance uh, simply due to the fact that's one data point. Uh, if you compare it to the n equals 30 data points that we've already collected, that mean wait time uh, is going to be um, less uncertain. There's less uncertainty when you have 30 data points compared to a uh, singular data point, which is why in our z statistic we're going to have um, a lot more uh, variance coming into play.
Again, we have the same variance as part one. We, the way we set up the interval is very similar, uh, except again, there's an extra term in the square root. And so when we plug in our values for this confidence interval, we end up getting uh, a much larger interval. And in fact, it starts at negative 9.92 minutes and it goes up to 29.92 minutes. So this is a 95% prediction interval for the amount of time you would have to wait for the next bus, if you had to wait for another day. And again, this doesn't really make sense because we can't wait for a bus for a negative amount of time. So if we wanted to fix this interval to make it make more sense, we could set the lower end of our confidence interval to zero and then simply recompute um, our, our, um, our, our upper bound uh, to make sure that we still get a, uh, a reasonable prediction interval. So yeah, that's, that was question one from our second midterm. Uh, I'd just like to make some quick acknowledgements before I end off the video. Uh, so thank you to Professor Josh Taylor for the course and the term test content, uh, as well as my tutorial to Susanna Rumsey. And uh, I'd also like to thank the individuals from whom I took this uh, Beamer template from. Uh, so thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.